Jack was a good friend. The three of us hung out together all the time. We, we would fly to uh, Florida frequently. We'd go to, um, you know, I don't know what they were doing, those two. I mean, they were probably doing things with marijuana. But the fact is, I would stay at the pool at the Mutiny Hotel or something in Miami, uh, Coconut Grove, and I would just work on my tan and swim and drink pina coladas. And I was protected from the information. And Tom and I weren't married at that, at that exact time, but even when I was married to Tom, and there would have been some protection, uh, spousal protection for me knowing anything. I mean, he still didn't, you know, I still didn't know any real, I knew details, but I didn't know what they were actually doing. And he came with this very large, tough looking uh, uh, friend and looked like Mutton Jeff. Uh, his friend was, was strong, very good looking, uh, and was uh, almost like a bodyguard. And Jack was extremely likable. And, and he must have been fascinated by Tom because he loved, he really was so loyal to Tom, Tom that I, 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 was a, I felt good that he had, had a friend that uh, cared so much about him and looked out for him. Jack, when he was with Leslie Bacon, um, they were part of Tom's uh, sort of commune, his tribe, uh, what was it, the, I forget what Free he, Ranger tribe. Free Ranger tribe, that was on 17th Street, that's where they had the TP and the, uh, and the desks and offices. And he was a sweet guy, and he was definitely not from New York. I mean, he was practically a farm boy. And uh, I didn't know what the hell he was doing in, in, in our scene, you know, he was just a nice guy. There were plenty of people traveling along with, for the ride who didn't really, you know, they sort of, they didn't even have the style. I mean, I don't know what, what the fuck they were doing. Um, but in those days, often enough, you know, you just had people who had nowhere else to go and this was a fun scene and that was that. And I don't know what, I never got Jack, I never got Leslie, I never f could figure out what the fuck they were about. Jack used to come around and ask me for advice when Forsyth used to go curled up in the fucking fetal position for days on end and wouldn't talk to anybody. So Combs would come around and ask me what to do, you know. I don't even remember what I told him. And he had the music going almost uh, uh, full blast. It was dark and he didn't turn the lights on and he said, John, uh, sit down and let's talk. And he had this uh, container of gas uh, and he would blow up these balloons. And he said, John, just take a, take a whiff of that. And I found out later it was uh, laughing, laugh, laughing gas. Uh, of course, ha having had no drugs even even been close to drugs my entire life uh, this was a this was a interesting to me and i didn't uh, i was afraid to take inhale any of it but uh, we, we we sat there and uh, talked and uh, they took me into another room and uh, jack uh, showed me uh, a drawer filled with uh, uh, was apparently high grade marijuana uh, in in packages uh, offered it to me and I, I, I declined. He had a copy of Jane's that, that, that there's a, a publication about airplanes. He was always reading it. He was always reading it. And he was always looking at airplanes on sale. And the sad thing is at one point he did buy an airplane and Jack went and did a training course in, uh, in, in Florida somewhere that I used to uh, you know, laugh and make fun of him and say, you're taking a crash course, Jack. Why are you taking this crash course? I mean, you know, it doesn't sound too safe to me, you know? And um, in the end, it wasn't, it, it, you know, he, I, the first time he flew, he, he the first time that he flew that, and Tom was in Florida, I remember I was in New York, um, I was, Tom and I were married then. We lived in a loft um, over Bruno's Bakery on um, LaGuardia Place in Soho. And uh, Tom, I knew, was in Florida and that Jack was, they were both elated because they finally had this plane and Jack was flying it. And um, I remember I was running a bath one night at home and I didn't expect uh, Tom back. But he walked in the door and he was really quiet and he said, how are you? And I said, well, I'm better now that you're back. That's great. It's great to see you. And then he started sobbing. He sobbed and he sobbed and he sobbed and he couldn't even get out words. He just sat on the edge of the bed sobbing. And 
then he told me that Jack crashed, that Jack's plane crashed, and that Jack was dead. And uh, Tom de became increasingly depressed from that point on. I think that was in the beginning of a fall period, you know, like autumn, and uh, maybe September or something like that. And it just got worse. Basically, I thought he just felt guilty because he bought the plane and was with Jack on this adventure of buying the plane and Jack would fly it. I didn't need to know any more than that to be able to know that Tom was not only devastated that his best male friend was dead, but um, that he had some responsibility. <laughs> <laughs>